So we're going to talk about the blessing. Uh, Galatians chapter 3. Um, and let's start at verse number 8. eight. Let's start at verse number 8. I'm going to be reading out the New King James Version. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. Oh, okay. She said that's what you told me. All right, New Living Translation is where we're going to go. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, uh, okay. But can you go to the scriptures, though, real quick? I do need to go up to verse number nine. It's verse number eight. <coughs> that's going to be later on. Galatians chapter three. <coughs> down to verse number 16 and then we're going to skip down to verse 26 through 29. All right, here the word of the Lord. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand saying, in you all the nations shall be blessed. <coughs> So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Curse is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Verse 11. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. For the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Verse 13, Christ has redeemed us. Boy, we can stop right there and preach a whole other sermon. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Verse 14, read it with me. Ready? Read that, that the, the blessings of Abraham, Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. faith. Verse 15, brethren, I speak in the manner of men, though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, no one knows or adds to it. Now, verse 16, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ. Amen. Let's go out to verse number 26. <laughs> For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have Put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to to the promise. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your goodness, your grace, your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We pray, Lord God, that as we read your word today, we pray that your word will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We pray, Lord God, that you would open our eyes to the wonderful ways of your law. We pray that you would give us the understanding and the wisdom to understand your scriptures. And we pray that your word will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Lord God, we pray for revelation and truth and knowledge about the blessing which we are all inheritors of. And Lord God, we pray that by the end of this day, or by the end of this uh, service, that, that we will not be the same, we will not leave the same way we came into this place. In Jesus' name, and the church said, Amen. Amen.
we're going to continue today. We're going to continue talking about the blessing. We talked about the blessing uh, last week and how God has designed the blessing to be upon every believer who receives the blessing by faith. Uh, we talked about how the blessing was the first thing that God said to any human being in Genesis chapter 1, uh, verses 26 through 28. Uh, the scripture says, Then uh, God said, uh, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Verse number 28, and God blessed them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. So we see that the first, we see that the blessing came upon mankind in the beginning when God blessed Adam. Amen. Then God blessed them. So the blessing was the most important thing because it was the first thing that any human being ever heard. Say first things first. First things first. So the same blessing spoken over Adam was spoken over Noah and his sons uh, after the flood. Uh, Genesis 9.1, I think I might have that up there. Genesis 9.1 says, and he amplified, and God pronounced a blessing upon Noah and his sons and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. So God's blessing is for us to be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. We talked about last week how uh, multiplying is not just procreation, but it can be a spiritual procreation as we, uh, 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 as we, as we have a spirit of fatherhood and motherhood over those uh, who don't have a father or a mother, and we encourage them, and just like we're going to do over at the TPP, uh, we're going to have a vacation Bible, uh, Bible school, and hopefully we can uh, procreate from a spiritual point of view uh, to bring sons and daughters into the kingdom of God. If you understand that, say amen. amen. And so we see now that the blessing was also spoke over Abraham and his descendants in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. We, we read this last week, and we've seen how the gospel was preached to Abraham here. In Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, Now the Lord has said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. Verse 3, And I will bless those. Read that with me. Ready, read it. And I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Amen. So we've seen that the blessing was passed down to Abraham and his descendants, and because of the blessing, Abraham experienced the favor of God and prospered greatly. In Genesis chapter 13, verse number 2, uh, we read that, uh, that Abram was very rich in livestock and silver and in gold. So we see that the blessing, uh, we see that the blessing uh, caused Abraham to experience favor of God and prosper greatly. So when we have, so when we're walking in the blessing and we're receiving the blessing by faith, well then God, God promises to prosper us. God promises to prosper us. God promises to make us rich. rich. Okay. God promises to make us rich. rich. I don't know why y'all scared of that God promises to make us rich. If y'all don't want to be rich, I'll take it. <laughs> Give me all their goodness, Lord. But God promises that and when the blessing is on our lives, then, then, then you're risen. Not just, and not just from a material point, uh, standpoint, 
uh, but also uh, from a spiritual standpoint, we are rich in spiritual blessings and in all the blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, according to Ephesians chapter uh, number 3, we are rich. God is rich in mercy. God is rich in his grace. So God not only promises spiritual uh, uh, material, but also most importantly, it's, it's the spiritual blessings. And, and the blessing is on our lives as we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. If you understand that, say amen. Amen. So through Abram's family tree, Jesus was born to save humanity. And through Christ, people can have a personal relationship with God and be blessed beyond measure. In John 10.10, 10, out of the Amplified, uh, Jesus said this. He says, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. <clears throat> read the rest of it with me. Ready? Read. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. So when we uh, so that so when we are in Christ Jesus or we have a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ, He promises us an abundant life. Well, the abundant life only comes because of the blessing. Mm -hmm. Amen. We receive some. See somebody that's experiencing that said, Amen. Amen. I'm experiencing the abundant life. Mm -hmm. I'm experiencing Amen. the overflow. I'm experiencing. Well, anybody experiencing overflow in here? Anybody have more flow going in your life? <laughs> Keep messing around with Jesus. It's going to come. Mm -hmm. So, within the blessing of Abraham, stated in Genesis chapter 12, we clearly see that God's covenant was that all the families of the earth will be blessed. And remember, the promise made to Abram was made not only to <laughs> Abraham, but also to Christ. So now, uh, Pastor Pat, we're going to Galatians chapter 3, verses 6 through 9. Galatians chapter 3, verses 6 through 9. Now let's take a look at how the blessing, Galatians is talking about how the blessing has now come upon us in Christ Jesus. Just as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. Only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseen that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed, so that those who are of faith those who are of faith, ask your neighbor, are they in faith? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Been waiting for an answer. <laughs> so those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. So, so those of us who are in Christ, we are heirs of the blessing. And by faith, we receive that blessing when Jesus Christ becomes Lord and Savior in our lives. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3, verses 13. Let's go down to verse 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So we see that Christ became a curse for us as he went to the cross so that the blessing, come on, you got to get this, so that the blessing of Abraham will come upon us and it's not something like we read, uh, like we looked at in offering. It's not something that you do on your own. It's not something that you've done because you, 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 you just because you're that good. It's because of Christ and faith in Him that the blessing is upon your life. Some of you, the blessing is on you, and you just have to shake it off and understand and recognize when it's in your life. Because some of you have the blessing on you, and you don't even recognize that the blessing is on you. See, the blessing overtakes you. It overtakes you. 
In other words, you could be going about your normal everyday activity and all of a sudden God blesses you. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 All of a sudden that check comes in the mail. All of a sudden that healing comes. All of a sudden, that deliverance comes. All of a sudden, you don't cuss no more. Amen. All of a sudden, you don't, you don't hold grudges no more. And you're wondering, how in the world is this happening in my life when I was a heathen hanging out on the streets? Amen. I can tell you why. Because the blessing has overtook in you. The blessing is now in your life, and, and through faith, God is now changing who you are through the Spirit, through the promise of the Spirit, through faith. God is now changing you because Jesus went to the cross and became a curse for us so that that generational curse in your family is now broken. Mm -hmm. I said that curse in your family is broken. Amen. Amen. That curse. You know, I know sometimes our families drive us absolutely nuts. <laughs> but if you believe in by faith that, that Jesus died for my sin and became a curse for me, that means that the curse, you, you know where the curse starts being broken at? It starts with you. Amen. Amen. It starts with your belief in, in Christ Jesus. Amen. So that the blessing of Abraham, verse 14, so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us. <clears throat> Verse 16. Let's go there. Now that Abraham and his seed. Look at that S on seed. Mm -hmm. That's capitalized, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Whatever you see, especially in the middle of a scripture like that, it's either talking about the Father, the Son, or the Holy <coughs> Spirit. So that seed is Christ. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. To, so let's say it like this. Now to Abraham and Christ were the promises made. He does not say and to seeds as of many, but as of one and to your seed who is Christ. Let's go down to Galatians verse 27 through 29. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ, verse 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ, verse 29. Read it with me. This is the promise. This is the promise right here. Ready? Read. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Heirs of what? The blessing. Heirs of the blessing. If we are in Christ Jesus, then that promise, way back in Genesis chapter number 12, that God gave to Abraham and the covenant, he, you know what? If you're in Christ and you're walking in faith, the reason why you're experiencing the blessings in your life is because of the Abrahamic covenant that happened way back in Genesis chapter 12. Some of y'all here don't even understand that. But you are walking under the covenant that God gave to Abraham because Jesus Christ came down from a, from a, from a fleshly and earthly point of view. He was born into the family of Abraham, uh, hence the Jews and the Israelites. He was born, uh, Jesus Christ was, was, was a Hebrew, born in the family of, of, of Abraham, but through faith, we are now seeds of Abraham because Abraham walked by faith. Matter of fact, the scripture says that Abraham believed God. Abraham didn't follow a law. Abraham didn't say, what does the Bible, what does the law say about this? He just, when God gave him a promise of, 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 of causing his descendants that be as, uh, to be as large as a multitude of the sand and the sea, Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to him as righteousness. God, we, the scripture says that we are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. 
And when we are in Christ, we now learn how to walk righteous. And also, it, the blessing causes us to walk righteously. Because the blessing is in your life, it causes you, uh, it, it makes, it, what it does is, it causes me to want to come to church. It causes me to want to serve. It causes me to want to raise my hand and praise the Lord. It causes me uh, to want to, to get in my Bible and read the scriptures and believe in the word of God by faith. It causes me, it causes all these things to happen because the blessing is on my life and I am now filled with, with Holy Spirit now. I am now filled with Holy Spirit. So, believers in Christ, we are Abraham's seed, and Christ is the seed of Abraham. Therefore, being in Christ as a believer, uh, uh, part that seed, and we are heirs to that promise in Genesis chapter 12. Tell your neighbor, I am heir, I am heir to the promise, to the promise that, God gave that God gave to Abraham. To Abraham. That's what you're experiencing now. You're experiencing that promise right now. Those of you who are prospering and your finances are right and your mind is right. <laughs> your mind is right now. Amen. Amen. I said your mind is right now. Amen. Because a lot of y'all in here was just plum crazy at one time. <laughs> I know I was. Just crazy. Just crazy. I, how our mother used to say, just crazy as a, as a loon. <laughs> just crazy. But now you have your right mind now. You know, it's just like it's just like the it's just like the man that was in the tomb and he was cutting himself up all the time and, 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 and couldn't nobody get close to him because as soon as you get close to him, they cuss you out. Anybody ever done that? Yeah. Yeah, I know you did. And so now that you have Christ, now you're sitting here in church clothed and in your right mind. Amen. That, that, that shout, that shout, that shout right there. Somebody ought to shout and thank God for being in the right mind. You ought to clap and give God praise for being in the right mind. You work all the way to God. So God's promise to Abraham is that in him all the nations of the earth would be blessed. All right. The seed of Abraham would be blessed because of him. Uh, but they, the seed of Abraham would be blessed because of Abraham, but they too had to exercise faith in order to enjoy the promise of blessing. So you must exercise your faith in order to enjoy the promises of the blessing. If you do not have faith in what the Word of God says, if you don't have faith that you are heirs of the blessing, the blessing on your life, you're not going to receive the benefits of the blessing. And you have to remember that you must be obedient as well. Obedient to God and obedient to His Word in order for the blessing to take place in your life. Somebody say amen. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verses 26 through 28. I'm almost done. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verses 26 through 28 says this. Behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. This is God talking to, this is Moses and God talking through Moses the prophet. Today I have a blessing and a curse. The blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord. A blessing if you what? Obey, obey the obey commandments obey. of the Lord your God, which I command you today. And the curse if you what? Do not obey. Do not obey. That's pretty cut. Boy, that's pretty cut and dry, isn't it? If you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way which I command you today to go after other gods, chemicals, sexual gods, music gods, uh, what other kind of gods we go after? Drug gods. Drug gods. Food, food, food gods. Clothing. Clothing. Those are all gods. Those are all gods that if you go after those things, God says the blessing will not be upon you. Mm. Amen. And how many of us, how many of us have been drawn to other gods mm. before we came to Christ? So the Lord's blessing rests on those who are faithful to him. A blessing if you obey God and a curse if you don't. God's system of blessing is clearly il illustrated. Proverbs 10.22 says this. This is one of this is I and my wife, one of our favorite scriptures. Ready? Read it with me. Ready? Read. The, the blessing, blessing of the Lord, Lord makes one rich, and he has no sorrow with it. Here's 
So here, here's that scripture. This sums up that scripture. I don't know why I want to use this example first, but I will. If, if, if you are believing God for a mate and you're not married, and that knucklehead you with right now <laughs> ain't acting right, then there's some sorrow in that, and there's no blessing involved in that. I just said it in the way y'all 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 get this. Right? Yeah. But if I'm in a in a relationship with someone and they're respecting me, uh, they're not allowed. They're not. Uh, uh, they're not uh, uh, trying to trying to trying to get me uh, to, to to have sex before marriage. They're not trying to get me to do stupid, crazy things. And you feel really good about that. Then that that just might mean that there may be a blessing involved in this relationship. Amen. If I'm on a job and, and that job is just. You know, just I just full of consternation and and, and 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 heartache and heartbreak. That may not be the job that God has for you, because the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow to it. So when there's some things going on in your life, and and, and you know that 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 there's some sorrow, some grief that's adding to it, then there's no blessing on that. But when you're doing something, and you know when when God is in something, everything just kind of falls in place. Amen. Amen just falls in place. There ain't no struggle, there ain't no strain, there's a rest behind it, and everything falls in place because the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow to it. So whatever it is that we are doing, you know if the blessing is on it, if, it's, it, 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 if it flows with the flow of God, then the blessing is on it, but if it's a struggle, there's no blessing upon it. That's the easiest way that we can tell you because we have to be aware that if this thing has some sorrow to it, it ain't from God. Amen. It's not from God. It's not from God. But when you have things working well in your life, and, 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 and things are going smooth and the blessing is on your life. And I'm going to tell you how you can really how you can really tell whether the blessing is on it. If it lines up with God's word. Amen. If it lines up with that's why you better know what the word of God says. If it lines up with God's word, then that's the blessing. Amen. If it doesn't line up with God's word, there's no blessing upon it at all. The blessing works. As you speak the word of God in your life, the blessing you will take the blessing wherever you go. Healing, provision, your prayers are answered, you got joy, you got peace, the depression's gone, the hurt's gone, you walk in the blessing, and the blessing is on you. We are that seed, and by faith, we must receive the blessings of Abraham in our lives. Uh, I'm going to do something real quick. Uh, we want to speak blessings into uh, do some of your lives. And so I'm going to ask my wife to come up. Help me. Where's Barbara? Is she gone? She's children. 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 Because we want to speak, you know, uh, we want to spend a little time, a little time, uh, a little prophetic time. We want to spend time uh, speaking a word over some of you that the Lord leads us to speak a word over. And so, I think we're just not going to have everybody come, come to the altar. Uh, we need uh, the, the, oh. Go ahead. Yeah, we need something. If, while, she gets, while she gets to music, that we're going to have up there. Uh, because we believe that uh, we are the belief that this is what the Lord is calling us to do is that we want this church to be a prophetic church. In other words, we want we want to be able to, the Bible says that in, 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 uh, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 that prophecy builds up and edifies. And we want to build you guys up and edify you guys. And we may not have a word for everybody but we got a word for it. We, we're, going to, we're going to give you words God needs us to give a word. And so, uh, let me pray while she's getting the music ready. I'm going to pray. Uh, and I'm going to pray that the Lord will give us accuracy. Uh, the Lord will give us accuracy in the, word, uh, the, uh, the prophetic word. So I'm going to pray. Father, we just thank you for your grace and your mercy. And now, Father, we just pray, Lord God, that you just speak 
into our hearts. And then, Father, we just pray that you would give us a word, accurate word, that, Lord God, that your word that you give us will be true, that it will be accurate, and that it will not fall to the ground. So, Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord God, for your prophetic ministry. And we pray, Father, that your spirit of prophecy will fall upon your service, Lord God. In Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 14, uh, verse 3, verse 1 through 3 says, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, uh, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to man but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mystery. That's when we're speaking in a tongue. But verse 3, this is where I want to go. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. So when we prophesy, when the spirit of prophecy goes forth, what the what scripture says is happening is that you are being built up and edified and the church is being edified. Amen? Amen. Amen.